Now that you have configured GNS3 for our new topology, I'm going to talk about this topology a little bit and after that I will go into BGP discussion. And actually I'm not going to be deep into theories of BGP. What I am doing here is to, you know, pinpoint the design specification of BGP on MicroTech routers and I show you how you can do this. I'm going to touch a little BGP theories, of course, but what I am doing here is this. You need to have a working interior gateway protocol in your network. Actually, you need to have a kind of IGP protocol such as OSPF RIP or anything else in your network. You remember that I had configured OSPF in my network and I had several areas. What I am going to do, I want to make it a little simple. And I want to put all of these routers into OSPF area 0 so that I am not so concerned about OSPF implementation here. But what I am going to do next is this. I want to connect to ISP1 and ISP2. They may have their own IGPs, but this is not what I care about. What I am caring about is this. I just want to have a BGP connection to ISP1 and ISP2. So, I may have another kind of IGP set between my router and ISP router. That's okay. We may go for RIP, for example, or OSPF, and we have another OSPF instance in our network to connect to ISP1 or ISP2. That's okay. I may go for OSPF in one side and RIP in the other side. But, what I am going to do next is to create a BGP neighborship between ISP1 and router 4 and between ISP2 and router 3. So this is the type of connection that I want to have and after that I can go to BGP configuration. So let's start with this. I have changed the connection between router 4 and ISP1 to 100-148-0 network and I have changed router 5 its role is going to be ISP2 and now I'm going to remove this from my OSPF configuration I don't want to have these here let's go and start with this configuration and next I will go through the theories so on router 1 I just want to have area 0 so I put all network into area 0 that's going to be area backbone I'm going to remove this area and you can see that all interfaces go into area backbone in a minute let's go to router 2 again router 2 is gonna have such a thing if I uh, close this and go to uh, networks I want to put this under area backbone click on OK go to areas and remove area 24 we don't need it anymore but we want to have this here under area backbone you can see that it changes and let's go to router 3 and router 3 we need to be a little cautious because we don't want Ethernet 2 to be part of our OSPF network but other interfaces should go under this and this is 172.16.35 network so let's go to router 3 and first of all I need to go to network remove this network and these networks should go under area backbone so double click on this and make it backbone this one as well go to backbone go to areas and remove these two areas we don't need them rather for again needs a little caution so ethernet 2 is not going to be part of ospf so let's go to rather for this is rather for and open it the the networks are going to be all under area 20 under area 0 so this is going to be area backbone again this one backbone and I can safely remove them I don't need them this tree and this one should go under area backbone as well so I don't need to have area 24 anymore let's go to router 5 that is my ISP1 now if I open IP addresses you can see that I have only now this is not my router part this is the new router that is ISP1 right now it has only one interface 100 148 
600, that's okay. It does not contribute to any routing protocol, that's okay again. And now I want to connect to my next router, that is router 5, but I'm going to change its name using system identity to ISP2. And now it is ISP2, and this is not going to be part of OSPF, so the networks are all going to be removed. And areas, there is no area, and now you can see that instance is not running. And make sure that no other writing protocol such as RIP is working here, that's okay. So this is the configuration that I just created. If I go to router 1 and check the routes, you can see that I can reach to all routes in my network except those that I have excluded from my own network. They are going to be my ISPs. Okay, now I want to talk about BGP. And what is BGP? BGP is Border Gateway Protocol. And why would we go for Border Gateway Protocol? We need kind of protocol to connect between autonomous systems. Autonomous systems can be enterprises in the internet. They can be, you know, big networks in the internet. And if they have at least two connections to ISPs, they may want to connect to internet and be part of its routing system. Or if they are too big, they can connect to internet and be one end of internet. Okay? So this is not so important to talk about BGP basics, but what I am talking about is this. BGP is multi-protocol. It doesn't care about its inter, you know, in, uh, its what is the you know IGP. It doesn't care about the IGP underlying that. It doesn't care about what routing information is in IGP. It creates its BGP. It's actually the border gateway protocol neighborships with different routers, it selects some very specific networks and distributes these networks between uh, these routers, routing protocol, and it doesn't touch your IGP too much. So why would we go for IGP before configuring BGP if BGP does not care about IGP? BGP needs to create neighborship, okay? this kind of OSPF, you need to connect to some router to be able to send and receive updates to and from that router. For example, if I want to configure a connection between router 4 and router 1, BGP does not care about if router 1 is connected to router 4 directly. What BGP wants to know is this, can I reach rather one through one or the other way. For example, if I want to create a neighborship between rather four and rather one using loopback interfaces, is rather one's loopback interfaces reachable when I am pinging it using my loopback interface? If this is true, I can create the connection. I don't care if it is connected to me or it is multiple hops away. What I care about this is this. I just want to be able to reach its IP address. So I don't need to be in the same subnet. I don't need to be connected to that router. I just need to reach to that router. That's the only thing that I care about. So this connection can be interior or can be exterior. So I can connect to one router and put it in my own autonomous system number. For example, I am AS number 65000. Or I can connect to another router in just another uh, uh, autonomous system. For example, I can connect to a, an AS, that is the autonomous system. I can call it AS because it is easier to call that. I can connect to AS5, for example. And my AS can be, for example, 65,000. It doesn't matter. But 
if I connect to a router in my own autonomous system, I may behave differently from what I will do if I connect to another autonomous system's router. So I'm going to talk about these differences and they are going to be so important. And I want to break things um, down to very, very small pieces so that I can cover all BGP configuration and MicroTik routers. And if you know this configuration, you can easily go and configure this on Cisco routers and Juniper routers or anything else. Just know that BGP is in a standard and because this is a standard, you are you know, you can easily transfer your knowledge from one platform to another platform. Okay, in the next section, I want to start configuring my internal BGP routers and show you how you can do this. But for now, let me select which routers are going to, you know, be part of my BGP uh, network. For the first configuration, I want to put all of these routers into BGP configuration. But after that, I need to be selective. I don't need all my routers to know all those routes. And you know, a lot of routes are in BGP routing table. If you choose one of internet routers and you know, take a look at its routing table, you can see that more than 300 routes, 300,000 routes are in their routing table. And I don't want to advertise all of them into my internal routers. I just want to have these routes on some of my routers. And I'm going to be selective in the next section. I want to show you how you can do that. But because we have a, a, a limited number of routers, first of all, let's put all of those into BGP configuration and see the result.